police officers firing live bullets. I know the front, front row are seated by politicians, but allow me to ask police officers firing live bullets to young men that only had what you have, sir, the flag of their nation and a bottle of water and a whistle. Live bullets. Then in whose hands are we safe? Whom are we going to turn to? Which explanation are you going to give to their parents? We saw them on TV with guns. The guns didn't have any tear gas. And they were aiming at innocent Kenyans. I am here to say I hope this message will reach to the president. I am here to let the president know that the parents to Rex and the parents to over 40 Kenyans that lost their lives in the past two weeks, they don't need any explanation. What they need is justice. That is what they need. Justice. Justice for their children. Innocent children who can't go to school because they can't get help loans. Innocent children who can't go to campus because joining campus right now is a project. They were just expressing their disappointments. They don't need explanations. They need justice. And I'm speaking on their behalf, and I'm speaking on behalf of my spiritual daughter, Jillian. What they need is justice for X. Period. Spare us stories. Spare us PR. We need justice. I'm finishing. I'm going to the scriptures. But let me make this clear. All we are asking for is justice for Rex. Because the officer who killed Rex is eating right now with his family. When the mother and the father to Rex cannot eat when they imagine their son is in the cold room. All they are asking for is justice for Rex. Mr. President, we don't want explanation. All we are asking for is justice for Rex. Because the police officer who killed Rex is sleeping in his house with his wife and children when the father to Rex is sleeping outside in the cold. Keeping company those that have come to mourn with him. All we are asking for is justice for Rex. All we are asking for is justice for Rex. Because Rex was not a criminal. Rex was not a hooligan. He was a responsible Kenyan. In fact, to make it clear, Rex was not even part of the demonstrators. He was just from work. He fell in the hands 
of the police officers when he found himself in the midst of the demonstrators. That is what we are asking for. He wasn't a criminal. He wasn't a hooligan. We are only asking for justice. Yesterday, they published images of the most wanted 40 demonstrators. The most wanted 40 demonstrators in Kenya. Mr. President, if they could have, if they identified and took the images of the 40 demonstrators on CCTV cameras, then Mr. President, the images of the police officer that killed Rex and all the other 40 Kenyans can be found on the CCTV camera. All we are asking for is justice for Rex. Am I preaching good? Yes. That is what we are asking for. My life is in God's hands. I left the house this morning and I was telling my family that, you know, uh, with these abductions, uh, I'm, I'm really going to pour out my heart today in church and I don't know if I will come back or not. But we just need to say it as it is. I say we just need to say it as it is. Do you know why I'm saying it as it is? Can I tell you why I'm saying it as it is? Let me tell you why I'm saying it as it is. Because the people that brought and introduced the president to us in church are now quiet when the church is in, when the nation is in chaos, when people are being killed, yet they are the ones who brought him to the church. At least at least even if my life comes to an end I've seen my children the Lord has blessed me with seven lovely children amazing ones and in fact Benny stand up That's my girl. And in fact, I've changed my mind. Anybody that wants to get married to her, I don't need cows, you'll bring horses. Yeah, that's a deal. Horses, not cows. So don't tell me Mr. President, that you are doing investigations. No, no. Investigations on who killed Rex? Investigation on who killed the 40 innocent Kenyans? No, 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 no. No investigation, sir. You know the police officer that killed Rex. There is no investigation. Bring him to book and let justice prevail. Simple. Paul is saying in the scriptures that fight the good fight of faith. Okay. Because Rex, they say, he was part of the demonstrators. Let us take it that way. That he was part of the demonstrators. Fine. Okay. He was part of the demonstrate. Those who were demonstrating. Paul is saying in the scriptures. Fight the good fight of faith. I can confidently stand here today. And say. Rex fought the good fight. 
because Rex stood and he said, I'm not going to see this nation continue into debt when the, when the finances and the, and, the, and the funds in the country are being mismanaged and yet people are, are... He said, I will not stand and see that happen. He refused to remain quiet. He refused to remain quiet. He fought the good fight. He placed his life on the line. He paid the ultimate price with his life. I'm sorry, Reverend. I'm a preacher, so am I shouting too much? Okay, thank you. You know, I don't want to shout too much so that at least uh, my brother, Reverend Paul, can invite me again for the service next time. Yes. So please just ignore me if I'm shouting too much. Just do, do, give me that sign, okay? Fight. The good fight. So he died fighting corruption. Rex died fighting corruption. Rex died fighting cartels. Rex died fighting misappropriation of funds. Rex stood the ground and he said, I will not stand and see this country sink into debt. That is why he died. He didn't die because he stole anything. My brother was there. He was one among the people that were demonstrating. My son was there, although he was now in the media, taking uh, videos and reporting them to the news. My baby sister was there, demonstrating. They placed their life on the line for the sake of their nation. They refused to remain silent. And they asked themselves, until when shall we continue to be quiet? Rex died fighting the good fight because he didn't want his children to find themselves in the debt that he's finding himself in, debt that he didn't ask for. And still, the SRC can confidently gazette the increment of salaries of politicians. May God forgive them. I say may God forgive them. saying in the scriptures he's saying that I have fought a good fight I have run the race and I have kept the faith Rex Masai fought a good fight but he did not finish the race I repeat Rex fought a good fight, but he did not finish the race. His life was cut short by a reckless police officer that even when he is getting into his Land Cruiser pickup, he can still have the audacity to shoot. I'm remaining with 15 more minutes. I have fought a good fight. Rex fought a good fight. And to my young brothers and sisters, famously known as Gen Z, you are fighting a good fight. (laughs) 
Your fathers will not say it because they didn't do it. And because they didn't do it, that is why you are doing it. You are fighting a good fight. Kudos. I celebrate you. This nation will be glad you came. This generation will be glad you came. This generation will smile because Rex placed his life in line. You're fighting a good fight. Keep on fighting. I'm delighted that even now when the demonstrations took a different turn and it was invaded by, by, by thugs and hooligans and criminals, they distanced themselves and we, they said that our protest was peaceful. And because their protest was peaceful, President Ruto never has, I, he has never backed down. The young men, Generation Z, for the first time in the history of this nation, they made a, pre, a, a finance bill to be thrown out. Kudos, Gen Z, you are fighting a good fight. I celebrate you and I honor you. When Christ comes and finds me alive, I will tell him, Father, I'm glad that I was part and I saw the revolution that my generation brought. The, sp the Pentecostal spiritual fathers that introduced the president to us are now quiet. They can't be seen anywhere. They are not talking. Yet, they were moving church to church and even calling us as pastors and telling us to mobilize our members and vote in for the president. We had, we had, because they are our spiritual fathers. But now that the nation is sinking into debt, corruption, misappropriation of funds, why are you silent? We are left all alone. We are left all alone as young men. We are left all alone as a nation to fight for ourselves. They are quiet. And because we are left all alone, we have to fight the good fight. We have to fight the good fight. And therefore, ladies and gentlemen, I have a question that I want to ask you this afternoon, even as I finish. Are you fighting the good fight? Are you fighting the good fight? Martin Luther King one day said, in the end, we shall not remember the words of our enemies by the silence of our friends. When Rex died, I wasn't in Nairobi. I was in the village. And I received a call that Rex has been shot dead. I couldn't call Gillian. I couldn't call Chris, the father to Rex, at that point, because I knew what they were going through. But something happened. My baby sister, who is in campus, when I was in the village, seated down, supervising some projects that were being done at home. I looked at my sister and I saw her looking at me direct in the eye because she was also in the village. And when she looked at me, I felt that something was wrong and I assumed it. She kept on looking at me
And then I asked her, what is it, sweetheart? What is bothering you? And then she opened up and she told me, why are you silent? Why are you not saying something? Why are you keeping quiet? He looked at me direct in the eyes and told me, Dickens, say something. And then I looked at her and I asked her, what do you want me to say, dear? And she looked at me and told me, reject the finance bill. And for the first time, I had to make my stand known about the finance bill. Because I didn't want her to say one day that in the end, we will not 